serve your life. We are not the makers of history. We are made by history. Very beautiful evening to all. I heartily welcome our honorable dignitaries, dear parents, and my lovely students and lovely viewers watching us tonight. It is a very glorifying moment for us that our six promoted students to seven of the Malaysia's largest institution, Narayana Group of Schools, are hereby to express their interest, learning, knowledge, with some amazing facts about the history of India. I, hold, I wholly heartedly welcome everyone in the Epic Emperor of India 2021, episode two by Delhi T. I presenting the Magda dynasty. Proceeding further, I would like to welcome our dignitary, the high school zonal coordinator, sir, Mr. Madhusudan, sir, high school zone one coordinator, sir, Mr. Gurat, sir, Mr. Gurat, sir, high school uh, zone two coordinator, sir, Mr. Nan Kishore, sir, and all our respected principals. The head of the department of soft skills, Ms. Vedavati, ma'am, the team leader from North and South Zone and Regional Soft Skill Head from the Department of Soft Skills, Pan India. I'm really glad for your valuable presence and in this in this live event. So I would I would kindly request our respected uh, team lead sir to please come forward and wish the students for their presentation. So, now I I want to invite and welcome a respected uh, principal ma'am of Ludhiana branch, Ms. Supriya ma'am, to please come forward and bless the children for their for their presentation. Uh, ma'am, seems ma'am is facing some network issue. We can move ahead. Okay. Now I would like to welcome respected principal ma'am of Faridabad sector 87, Neha ma'am. Ma'am, please come forward and bless the children. Good evening. Uh, Rishu ma'am, I believe uh, Neha ma'am is facing some network issues. We will be uh, calling ma'am once again when she has a good network. We can move ahead for now. Oh. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, the voice is not audible. Let us uh, let us proceed ahead with the light lunch lightning ceremony.
Thank you so much, ma'am. Now uh, we would like to invite our team one from the team two of Delhi champions and to present about the Magad dynasty lifestyle by a budding researchers. So over to team one. Shahar, you can go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Shahad Bhadwaj, a budding archaeologist from Sector 87 branch, Furida. Today, I'm going to tell you about the introduction to Magad dynasty. Basic information about Magad dynasty. Magad was an ancient Indian kingdom in southern Bihar and was counted as one of the 16 Mahajan Abadas, great kingdoms of ancient India. Magad played an important role in the development of Jainism and Buddhism and two of India's greatest empires, the Mauryan Empire and Gupta Empire, originated in Magda. Moving over, the Mauryan Empire and Gupta Empire, both of which originated in Magda, saw advancements in ancient India's science, mathematics, astronomy, religion, and philosophy, and were considered the golden age of India. The Magha kingdom included republican communities such as the community of Rajkumar. Villages had their own assemblies under their local chiefs called Gramagas. The administrations were divided into executive, judicial, and military function. Geography of Magda dynasty. The kingdom of Magda before its expansion corresponded to the modern districts of Patna, Jainbad, Nalanda, Aurangabad, Arwal, Nawada, and Gaya in southern Bihar. It was bounded on the north by the river Ganges, on the east by the river Champa, on the south by the river Chodana, by the Chodana Plateau, and on the west by the Son River. Moving over, this region of Greater Magda had a culture and belief system of its own that predated Hinduism. Much of the second urbanism took here from 500 BCE onwards, and it was here that Jainism became strong and Buddhism arose. The importance of Magda's culture can be seen in that of Buddhism, Jainism, and Hinduism adopted some of its features, most significantly a belief in rebirth and karmic retribution. Over to Ikshita. Good morning to all. I'm Ekshida Gupta from Glasses. Today I'm going to tell you about lifestyle of Mukta. Life is died of Magda. About Magda. Magda was an ancient Indian kingdom in southern Bihar and was counted one of the 16 Mahajan birds. Magda played an important role in the development of Jainism and Buddhism. And two of the greatest emperors, the Maurya Empire and Gupta Empire, which are originated in Magda. The Maurya Empire and Gupta Empire, both of which originated in Magda, saw advancement in ancient Indian science, mathematics, astronomy, religion, and philosophy, and was considered as the golden age of historic India. It was having well-paid civil servant of efficient decentralized administrative system which were so successful that other dynastic adopted the method. Attires of Magda. Magda region is split between the states of these uh, flippers are polished with such a fashion that they appear to be made of metal. Food. Food is leading manufacturer and exporter of the quality spices, paper, vermicelli, and various dairy products. Food in Gupta period, variety of rice in Gupta period. Period, Ayurvedic food, variety of sugar and salt in Madhya period. 
These are spices. Clothes. The festival songs and the costume worn by the people of Madha in the mirror to its culture and traditions. Sari. A sari is a woman garment from the subcontinent to the uh, consist of the artist trap varying from 4.5 to 9 meters in length, in breadth 600 to 1200 millimeters. Dhoti. Dhoti is also known as Panshi Dhoti Shadha. Turban. The turban is a type of head wear or based on cross wedding. Type of houses. Ancient Kingdom of Magdha. Arts of Magdha. Takeable in the assemblies of the Buddhistic and Gupta arts and crafts, the Sarsati necklace and the bracelets. Monuments of Magdha. Travel in the Buddha footsteps step and discovered the monuments around 2000 years ago. Empress of Magdha, Vajira, Kaushala Devi, Dhurdara. Over to Vanshika. Hello everyone, I am Vanshika, the new budding archaeologist from branch 77 Gurugram. Today I am going to show you my PPT on the topic, the Magad dynasty language and scripts. So now let's talk about language. Language in ancient Magad, language like Sanskrit, Magadhi, Prakrit, Abhrantra and Pali were in use. Sanskrit is said to be the language of Aryans. Vedas and Upanishads are written in this language. There was a time when Sanskrit was both written and a spoken language. In the below pictures, you can see the ancient Prakrit language. Now let's talk about the definitions. Definitions first of Prakrit. Prakrit were the Middle Indo-Aryan languages developed from Pro-Indo-Aryan language, also the ancestor of Rigveda, Samskritam and the regional language. Now, the Prakrit is also definited into many sub -prakrit. The first one is Shorsani Prak, ancestor of Hindi and Haryani. Magadhi Prak, Bhojpuri, Maithili, and Magahi, same as the ancestor of Abba. Maharashtri Prak, Marathi and Konkani. Khas Prak, Garwalis, Kumanos, and Nepalis. Gujar Prak, Gujarati, Rajasthani languages. Ardha Magadhi Prak, Chhattisgarh, Udishi, same as Uriya and somewhere Uriya. Brachar Prak, Sindhi, Kachi, and Saraiki. Pesachi Prak, Punjabi, and Lahanda. Here also you can see the ancient Prakrit language picture. Same, the topic is definitions, but now of Brahmi. Brahmi is an abujda which uses a system of diacritical marks to associate vowels with constant symbols. Brahmi is a modern name for writing system of ancient South Asia. In the below five to six pictures, you can see the ancient Brahmi language writing skill. Now, I would like to throw light onto my main topic, Magad dynasty. Magad was an ancient Indian kingdom in southern Bihar and was counted as one of the 16 Mahajanpas, great kingdoms of ancient India. Magad played an important role in the development of Jainism and Buddhism in the two India's greatest empires, the Maurya Empire and the Gupta Empire originated in Magad. I repeat my main headline, the India's two greatest empires, the Maurya Empire and the Gupta Empire originated in Magad. In the below pictures, you can see the expansion of Magad from 6 to 4 centuries BCE in the India map. Now, I would like to show you some examples of ancient Prakrit language. The first one is this one. Second are the alphabets of ancient Prakrit languages which were used in the ancient time. Then is the 
ancient book called the prakrita over to manvi Good evening, everyone. Greetings of the day. Myself, Manvi, the budding archaeologist from Grand Sector Seventy Seven, Faridabad, and today I am going to tell you all about the powerful rulers of Magad Dynasty. Rulers of Magad. There are many rulers who ruled Magad, but three of them were very powerful. They are Chandragupta Maurya, Bindusara, and Ashoka. The very first ruler of Magadha was Chandragupta Maurya from 340 BCE to 298 BCE. He was the founder of the dynasty and he defeated and conquered both the Nanda Empire and the Greek satraps that were appointed or formed from Alexander's empire in South Asia. Magadha in rule of Chandragupta Maurya. The second emperor of Magadha was Bindusara from 297 BCE to 273 BCE. Bindusara was the son of Chandragupta Maurya and the father of the son named Ashoka. Bindusara's life is not documented as well as the lives of these two emperors. Much of the information about him comes from the legendary accounts written several hundred years after his death. Magad in rule of Bindusara Maurya. Now comes the most powerful ruler of Magad dynasty. Ashoka was also known as Ashoka the Great. He ruled most all of the Indian subcontinent from 268 BCE to 230 BCE. Ashoka was a grandson of dynasties founder Chandragupta Maurya and the son of Bindusara. He promoted the spread of Buddhism across ancient Asia, considered by many to be one of the India's greatest emperors. Ashoka expanded Chandragupta's empire to reign over a realm stretching from present-day Afghanistan in the west to Bangladesh in the east. It covered the entire Indian subcontinent except for parts in present-day Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and Kerala. Magad in rule of Ashoka. Some of the other rulers who ruled Magad are Dashrat, Sampati, Shalishuka, Devarman, Shatadhanvan, and Brihadrat. Dashrat, he was a grandson of Ashoka and is commonly held to have succeeded him as the imperial ruler of India. Dashrat presided over a declining imperium and several territories of the empire broke away during his central rule. Magad in rule of Dashrat. Sampati, he was the son of Ashoka's blind son named Kunala and succeeded his cousin Dashrat as the emperor of modern empire. He was the only great modern emperor after Ashoka and was a great pattern of Jainism, Magad in rule of Sampriti Maurya. Shalishuka, he was a successor and son of Sampriti Maurya. Like his father, he was truly the pattern of Jainism, Magad in rule of Shalishuka Maurya. Dev Burman, he was also named as Dev Dharman, according to Purans. He was a successor of Shalishuka Maurya and ruled Magdha for seven years, Magad in rule of Dev Burman Maurya. Shatadhanvan, according to Purans, he was a successor of Devarman Maurya and reigned Magtha for eight years. Magad in rule of Shatadhanvan. Brihadrat, he was the last ruler of Mauryan Empire and was killed by his general Pushamitra Shunga, who went on to establish the Shunga Empire and he later on developed the Shunga Empire. Over to Bhavya. Hello everyone, greetings of the day. Myself Bhavya Kaushik, the budding archaeologist from Sector 87 branch. Unwritten history is not easy to interpret and although much may be learned from the study of drawings, bony remains and surgical tools of early humans, it is difficult to reconstruct the mental attitude towards the problem of disease and death. So today I am going to talk about invention of medicines in the Magad dynasty. Ayurvedic medicines. Ayurvedic medicines is one of the world's oldest medical systems and remains one of India's traditional healthcare system. Ayurvedic treatment combines products mainly derived from plants. Some medicines or herbs which are used to cure people in those days are also used nowadays like turmeric and tulsi. 
Medicinal plants are also known as medicinal herbs. Medicinal plants are widely used in non-industrialized societies mainly because they are readily available and cheaper than modern medicine. Invention of medicine in Magadh has a long history. Its earliest concepts are set out in the sacred writings called Vedas, especially in the magical passages of the Athar Ved, which may possibly date far back as 2nd millennium BC. According to a later writer, the system of medicine called Ayurved was received by a certain Dhanvantri from the god Brahma and Dhanvantri was defined as the god of medicine. In later times, his statues were gradually reduced until he was predicted with having been an earthly king who died of snake bite. Thank you. Team 1 finished. Thank you so much, Team 1, for presenting such a beautiful knowledge and introduction for Magad Dynasty. Moving ahead, knowledge. Knowledge is the one which scatters the one civilization. Let's know how the Magad Dynasty knowledge works. Over to Team 2. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Snehal Mishra, archaeologist from Faridabad Sector 77. And today, I'm going to tell you about inventions of Magadha in science. So let's get started with our first topic, which is inventions of the number system. Aryabhatta is the earliest known mathematician and as the astronomer of India. The birthplace of Aryabhatta, who lived between 476 to 550 CE, is still a mystery. While many believe that he was born in Patliputra in Magad, he approximated the value of pi and also invented some maths formulae. He also invented the number zero, or you may say that he gave the number zero zero to a number system. Now we'll talk about Aryabhatta's contribution to science. Aryabhatta was aware that the Earth rotates on its axis and that the Earth rotates around the Sun and the Moon rotates around the Earth. He discovered the position of nine planets and related them to their position around the sun. He also knew about the eclipse of the sun, moon, day and night. Earth can two to the sun and the 365 days as the exact length of the year was also told by Aryabhatta. <clears throat> now I would like to share some of the images of Aryabhatta. The son of Magadha, Aryabhatta. Aryabhatta's contribution to astronomy. Motions of the solar system. Aryabhatta correctly insisted that the Earth rotates about its axis daily and that the apparent movement of the stars is deleted motion caused by the rotation of the Earth. Contrary to the then prevailing view that the sky is rotating. This is indicated in the first chapter of Aryabhatta, where he gives the number of rotation of the earth in a yuga, and he made more explicit in his Gola chapter. Now, we'll study the most interesting topic, which is inventions of the weapon. Magad under Ajata Shatru became the most powerful kingdom in North India. He is the inventor of two weapons, they are which are used in the wars, and they are the Rathamulasa, which is also called as the Skyped Chariot, and the Mahashilukantaka, which is also called as the Engine to the Eject Big Stone. There are some pictures of the Rathamulasa and the Mahashilukantaka. Now, we'll talk about the unique silver coin, Karshapana. The Karshapana silver coin was struck under the regime of imperial Magad rulers of the Magad modern empire. These ancient coins of India were irregular in shape and weighed about 2.9 to 3.5 grams. They are mostly found in round and square type. Now I would like to hand over my research to Wanch. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Vansh, archaeologist of Branch, Mohali. Today, I'm going to talk about my topic, inventions of administrative structures. Magda administration. Magda administration is divided into four departments, that are 
council of ministers military and espionage department revenue department judicial and police department council of ministers council of ministers or mantri parishad advised the king at many times and has acted as a political check also but the powers of ministers were limited owing to the fact that they were appointed by the king only military and espionage department the army was often led by the king and it was in the control of senapati and whom there were many adhyakshas of different banks and the army were aswam ashva nav rath hastya ayodhya gar adhyaksh and many more espionage department espionage department was managed by gudha purushes under the control of mahamatya prasad revenue department the revenue department was managed by two persons first was sanedat sanedat was responsible for storage of royal treasure and state income both in cash and kind second was samahar samahar was in charge of collecting revenue from various parts of the kingdom and looked after the income also and expeditious by supervising the work of mahamatya prasad both stationary and wandering judicial and police department the fountain head of law and all matters of great consequence were decided by the king as he was the head of justice there were mentioned about four sources of law in the rigved first was charitam vyavahar raja shasan and dharm over to vandita Hello everyone. Greetings of the day. Myself, budding archaeologist Vandita from Sect 87 branch, Faridabad. And today I am going to talk about the source of education for Magadh dynasty. Education. Magadh was a big center of education, which attracted a lot of scholars from all over the world, including China. the central asia and other parts of the world as well education played an important role in magadh rule and during this era primary education had to be obtained by the people and in case of formal and higher education people of the empire were required to stay in bahmanical agras or buddhist monasteries the important source of education for magadh dynasty were mostly from hindu puran jain atma and buddhist pali canon In ancient India, Gupta and Mauryan empires so advanced in education in fields of astronomy, philosophy, religion, mathematics, and Indian science. Scholars of this period included Varamira and Aryabhat. Aryabhat is the first one to be believed to consider zero as a separate number, which he called Shunya. He also postulated the theory that the Earth rotates about its own axis. And studied the solar and lunar eclipses. Kalidas was a great playwright and wrote plays such as Shakuntala, and also marked the highest point in such literature. He is said to have been of this period. The Sushta Samhita, which is a Sandhu reaction text, all of the major concepts of Ayurvedic medicine, with innovative chapters on surgery, dates to this period. Aryabhatta. Details of Aryabhatta's work are known only from this book named Aryabhatta, and it is believed that Aryabhatta himself didn't name it, but the name is due to later commentators. It is also occasionally referred to as the Arya Shata Ashta, which literally means Aryabhatta's 108, because it has 108 verses in the text, and it was written in a very terse style of. Because of literature, in which each line is an aid to memory for a complex system. Brit Samhita, an important contribution of Varamira, is the encyclopedic Brit Samhita. Although the book is mostly about divination, it also includes a wide range of subjects other than divination, such as astronomy. clouds rainfall matrimony domestic relations manufacture of perfume among many others 
the volume also expounds on gemstone evaluation criterion found in the Gorat Puran and elaborates on the sacred nine pearls from the same text. It contains 106 chapters and is known as the Great Compilation. Contributors to its education. First, Vikramaditya. Vikramaditya, also known as Chandakup II, supported learning. And among scholars in his court were the Ashnama Varamira and Sanskrit poet and dramatist Kalidas. Second, Chanakya. Chanakya had knowledge about medicine and astrology. He was a Hindu statesman and philosopher. He was also a teacher and royalist advisor to Chandakup Maurya. Chanakya wrote the Artha Shastra, which is the science of economics. Nalanda University. Nalanda was an ancient Buddhist monastery, which also served as a renowned education center situated in Magadha. This university had attracted scholars from Tibet, China, Korea, and Central Asia. Most of the knowledge about Nalanda comes from the writings of pilgrim monks from Asia. All students here studied Hinayan and Mahayan. The curriculum for them also included Sanskrit, grammar, Veda, mathematics, science, and medicine. It had a lot of books, a large collection of books, and texts in its library during the time. It had many books about how to cure diseases and about medicine. Nalanda also has some of the renowned scholars and teachers to its fame. Unfortunately, it was attacked in the 1200 CE by an army of Mamluk dynasty of Delhi Sultanate led by Bhaktiya Khilji. Bibliography. So I gathered all this information from various sources and websites. And here's a list of websites that I consulted for my research work. Now I would request Chaha to continue the Good morning, everyone. Myself, Chad Badwaj, an archaeologist from Brand, Sector 87, Faridabad. Today, I am going to tell you about the educational structures present in the Magad dynasty. Gurukulam. At the time of Magad dynasty, the only place where Shishya students can gain knowledge from Guru teachers were Gurukul. Gurukul system is an ancient Indian concept of education where the participants get knowledge by residing with his teachers as part of his family. Objectives of the Gurukul. The main objectives of the Gurukul were self-control, development of character, social awareness, integral development of personality, propagation of purity, and preservation of knowledge and culture. Advantages. As it was the only system of learning known in India at that time, most of the shishas gained knowledge from this method. The shishas received knowledge from all subjects. They got a practical and in-depth look at life. Moving over, children of all classes of society lived under Gurukul roofs as brothers. Along with practical knowledge, they gained knowledge of all aspects of life. They were taught impeccable manners and values that life is based on. They were taught respect for elders, mothers, fathers, and teachers. The children were taught to live with basic things and no fancy pretentious things. The Gurugul was a comprehensive learning center. Salient features of education system in Magad dynasty. Education system in Magad dynasty focused on the holistic development of the individual by taking care of both the inner and the outer self. The system focused on the moral, physical, spiritual, and intellectual aspects of life. It emphasized on values such as humility, truthfulness, discipline, self-reliance, and respect for all creations. Funds, the role of the community. At the time of Magad dynasty, knowledge was considered sacred and no fee was charged. Contribution towards education were considered the highest form of donation. All members of the society contributed in some form or the other. Financial support came from rich merchants, wealthy parents, and society. 
Besides gifts of buildings, the university received gifts of land. Education in detail. In Magad dynasty, both formal and informal ways of education system existed. Indigenous education was imparted at home and in Gurugul. There were people in home villages and Gurugul who guided young children in imbibing vicious ways of life. Temples were also the centers of learning and took interest in the promotion of knowledge of our ancient system. Moving over, teaching was largely oral and students remembered and meditated upon what was taught in class. Gurukul, also known as Ashrams, were the residential places of learning. Many of these were named after sages situated in forests in peaceful surroundings. Hundreds of students used to learn together in the Gurukul. During that period, the Guru and the Shishus lived together, helping each other in day-to-day -day life. The main objective was to have complete learning, leading a disciplined life and realizing one in a potential. Now I request Niharika to continue the research. Hello everyone, myself Niharika Singh, the budding archaeologist from Branch Sector 77, Faridabad. Today, I am going to tell you all about the gurus of the ancient time. Well, talking about the teaching style of that time, the gurus or teachers paid special focus to their students and taught them according to their knowledge and skill level. In ancient times, the teachings were basically via orals and debates. The different methods were as follows. At that time, books were not there, so students had the habit to learn and memorize what they have learned in the class. The teachers also helped them in memorizing. The students used to deep dive into the concepts taught by their teachers, and the teachers used to explore new methods to teach the students. Listening, contemplation, and concentrated contemplation were some new methods to explore the way of learning. Students used to ask questions about the topics being taught in the class. These topics were first discussed and then answered to the students. The education of that time mainly focused on the practical knowledge of the topics being taught in class. Students were taught practical skills like archery, meditation, swordsmanship, horse riding, yoga, etc. The Guru imparted knowledge of everything such as religion, Sanskrit, personality development, medicine, philosophy, warfare and many more. Personality development. The foremost aim of ancient education system was to build the overall character and personality of the students. The moral strengths were induced that helped the society to be together. This was because the education started and ended with religious rituals with a sense of wholeheartedly devotion for the cause of learning. The formal and informal education were given due importance. The pursuit of knowledge was the pursuit of religious value. The personality traits such as self-esteem and self-confidence were tried to inculcate in people through education. Time management. The syllabus coverage was given the utmost importance in almost all schools and universities. This needs time-bound completion of several academic activities. Lecturing is a time on an activity which could be accomplished using saprotic lecture model to deliver large amount of content within optimum time frame. Discipline. The Gurukul contains students from rich to poor families. The every student used to live a very simple life. The discipline, rules and regulations were rooted to morality and religion. Any violation of rules was treated as a sin and subject to punishment. Thank you. Team 2. Thank you so much, Team 2, for this beautiful learning for all of us. We all know that artifacts provide essential clues about lifestyle and progress of civilization. So let us listen about them. Over to Team 3. Dhruv, who can start? Hello, everyone. I am Dhruv from class 7 from branch Manesar. And today I am going to share my topic, Archaeologist. Archaeologist is 
a scientist by digging up a human remain and artifact. These remain can be any object that that people created that people created, modified or used and archaeologist name invented by Flavio Biondo. Next, the archaeological history. The archaeological history recorded by consists of architecture and artifact, biofact or ecofact and cultural landscape derived from Greek, the Greek historical archaeology, the remains of cultures of which a written history, the, the past human behavior. Next, artifacts. An object made by human being find it by archaeologist that is gold, silver, metal or plastic is an artifact. Artifacts are immensely useful to, to scholars who wanted to learn about a culture. Over to Atharv. Excuse me, Athar. Athar. Athar, your voice is not clear. Can you just check with your uh, microphone? Yes, yeah, your voice is not clear. Can you just start from the beginning, Athar? Just check with your microphone. Either you disconnect your microphone and then start from the beginning. Right. Yes. So now can I start? Yes, please. Yes, please. Go ahead. All the best. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I am Buddy Karthodis Athar from Raj Lazarbad. I would like to tell you about the archaeological existing today. Magda dynasty. King of the Shatru Magda, who ruled between 491 to 461 BCE, Bodh Gaya. Siddhartha gave enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. Now, major preliminary discovery in offerings. Bodh Gaya is a holy place. It is built by the Amra Ashoka in 3rd century and it is the earliest Buddhist temple. Partly Putra. Partly Putra to modern Patna, it is originally situated on the Gandhak River. It is built by the Magda ruler Udayan in 490 BCE as a small port near Ganga River and it was famous for trading and exporting goods. Gupta period. The Gupta had a strong central government, but they also allowed a center degree of a local government. The emperor was divided into provinces or territorial. The divisions are called Mukti or Pradesh. Three, Pillar of Ashoka. Pillar of Ashoka is located in Delhi. Pillar of Ashoka is located in Delhi. 16th century. The structure was built by the Emperor Akbar. The exterior of the Ashoka pillar in India has instructions from Ashoka in Malawi script. Gandhar. Gandhar is an Asian name for a cultural religion in what is the present day. Northwest Pakistan, Northeast Afghanistan with the greater northern western India, the subcontinent. Vaji. The ruler, the ruler of Vadi of the eight land of whom the Vajis, the Lichavis, the Shatriyan and the Vidhas are the most important. Manu Veda was a famous king of Lichavis who decided Amar Palli after saw her dance in Vishali. Panchala. Panchala is an Asian kingdom of Panchala is an Asian kingdom in northern India located in the Ganga Yamuna north of the upper Ganga stick plain. Thank you team 3. Now I hand over my mic to Akriti. Thank you so much, Team 3, telling about the artifacts and archaeologists about Maga Dynasty. Moving forward, tools and other scientific equipment shows that how developed the civilization was. Let us listen about Maga Dynasty. Over to Team 4. Good evening, everyone. Greetings of the day. My name is Akriti Rad. I study in class 7. Today, I am the archaeologist from Ghazabad branch. Today, I am going to tell about our dynasty Magad, equipments used and developed by Magad. Brief introduction about Magad. Magad was an ancient Indian kingdom in southern Bihar and was counted as one of the 16 Mahajan Pradas. 
great kingdoms of ancient India. Magadh played an important role in the development of Jainism and Buddhism. And two of India's greatest empire, the Mauryan Empire and the Gupta Empire, originated in Magadh. In the given the picture, it tells about the palaces which were used or which were formed at the time of Magadh. Now, map of Magadh. Here, it shows the blue one. It tells about how much. Firstly, the Magadh consists. In this, it shows the eastern part of our country, India. Now we will be reflecting on our main topic that is equipments used and developed by Magal. So let's start. Equipments, the things that are needed to do a particular activity. Now I'm going to tell about some important equipments that were balls, arrows, rods, shields, which are often used for the high jumblances, axes, pipes, and etc. In the given the picture, it tells about the equipments which were used at the time of Magal for wars, edu uh, educational structure, and Magal farming. Now, some equipment images that I'm going to tell you right now. First one is balls and arrows, which are used for the fights. Next is axes, which are used for the uh, manga farming. And next is this one, these are pipes, which are used for the professional work of the peoples at the manga time. Swords, which are used for the manga farming. Now, I'm going to tell you about the equipment of manga farming. Magadha was important for transport and trade, and its fortunate regions made agriculture prosper. Parts of Magadha for forested, and elephants from there were trained to fight for the army. Forests also provided iron mines in the region, provided to make strong weapons and tools. Do you know? Let me tell you one fact. Magadha is a biodiversity farm because it makes the strong weapons and the iron mines for the people to fight the wars and other more physical activities. Now, I'm going to tell about the equipment at the time of Magad. Education was very much important, and we know the studies that were done earlier, they are known as the Early Vedic period, which was from the 1500 BC to 1000 BC. Guru Dronacharya teaches archery for teaching archery and other more physical activities. They use the equipment like axes, pipes, and etc. Now, I would like to say Ahana over to Ahana. Thank you. Good evening everyone, myself Ahana Yadav, a budding archaeologist from Branch Kazibar. And today I'm going to throw lights on my topic, Magad Dynasty. Introduction to Magad Dynasty. Magad Dynasty, also known as the modern empire, was geographical, extensive, iron age, historical power in 185 BC, originating from its capital city at Patliputra. Mauryan administration, the Mauryan Empire had a smooth administration, efficient rulers. The government was centralized with a lot of staff to make sure that the work was carried on smoothly. Trade and commerce were carried on smoothly and the citizens were taken care of. The armies were always ready for any sort of external aggression or threat. Art and architecture. Another example of the Mauryan period is the great stupa of Sanchi. It is perhaps the finest surviving relic of Mauryan Empire. It is constructed at the height of 54 feet and it is surrounded by executively carved stone railings. But it is famous and notable due to its four gateways. Before this, there was no such tradition of carving gateways. So the construction of gateways can be said as the unique architectural technique used by the Mauryans. These gateways are elaborately carved and depicts various scenes from life of Buddha and the people who lived in that era. Chandragupta Maurya from 324 to 300 BC. Chandragupta Maurya was the founder of Mauryan Empire. He took help from Chanakya, who is a Brahmin teacher at Takshila. Chandragupta Maurya succeeded to Nanda's throne in 321 BC. King Bindusra from 300 to 273 BC. Chandragupta Maurya was succeeded by his son Bindusara in 297 BC. Bindusara ruled the northern part of India for 29 years. King Ashoka from 273 to 232 BC. Ashoka was the greatest emperor of ancient India who ruled the Mauryan Empire from about 273 BC until his death. Ashoka was a fierce military leader who continued his victorious campaigns in southern and eastern part of India for eight years. In 261 BC, Ashoka conquered the land of Kalinga, now known as Orissa. Extent of Ashoka's empire. Ashoka's policy of dharma. Dharma is the prakritic form of Sanskrit word dharma. 
However, Ashoka tried to use it in a much wider sense. His dharma was a code of moral duties, benevolent acts, and freedom from passion for an individual. The principle of dharma was such that could be acceptable by people belonging to any religious sector. Thank you, Team Delhi, to signing off. Thank you, Team Delhi, for giving such a lovely presentation on our story of Magadha Dynasty. Now, I take an honor to call our respected principal, ma'am, from Ludhiana branch, Mrs. Supriya Reddy, to please come forward and tell how you felt the presentation of the children. Hello. Yeah, ma'am, you're audible, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening to all the dignitaries and wonderful children of Narayana Group and Delhi Zone. Delhi Zone. And first of all, congratulate you for making this lively session and brought back the ancient civilization of India back from years and years. You brought this ancient civilization socially, economically, culturally, and whatnot. It was so good. And uh, many of you spoke flawless. And of course, the team behind you had worked tremendously to put up you right back here. Thank you. I once again congratulate you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable words. These words bring lots of smile on our children. Now I take an honor to call our respected team lead, sir, Mr. Shakil, sir, to please come forward and speak a few words for children's performance. Good evening, everyone. Uh, children, I would like to say only one thing. No one can defeat a powerful mind. Right? And that is what you have done. With your powerful determination and commitment, the way you have presented is wonderful. The subject that you have explored is something that we learn in school with a very minimum uh, knowledge or the knowledge that we gain is very less. But then you have gone a step beyond that. So wonderful, well presented, confidently done. Very good children. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. Now I will take an honor to call our regional head, sir, the man behind the, all of our hard work. Mr. Shafi, sir, please, sir, come forward and say some words for our children. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, so I, you know, I have no words today because I've been hearing all the students uh, in the rehearsals. Uh, but to be very frank, um, I, I would like to share that uh, I was a person who was, uh, you know, who never used to like history. But this is the first time that uh, I used to, I used to always find pictures in the history books. I always told my students also in the classroom that I always used to find pictures in the history book and our history books used to have always very less pictures. So that one picture make me to understand the whole chapter. But today, you know, you all made it history so beautiful that I'm in love with the history now. So, and you know, I, I can actually, if uh, this is the case that I have learned history, then I might have been, you know, uh, uh, an archaeologist in the uh, coming days, right? Uh, so, uh, definitely that was a great, great uh, presented by the students, uh, no doubt. Indeed, you know, you have a great support behind of the parents who have been, uh, you know, supporting you all the way. And uh, thank you so much, uh, all the students, to making... Uh, me fall in love with history you know the subject which i always used to go away from you always you know you to this time you ask me to come closer to it uh, am i right uh, supriya ma'am yes sir precisely <laughs> i agree with you 
right i Thank agree you. with you these are the little historians who are going to make a real history in future true true absolutely true ma'am and uh, we can see them today the great presenters presenting live pan india and you know uh, all the viewers are watching them live and that's something great and, and to add on sir the the uh, the part which makes us more terrified is the timeline they made it so easy with the visual things and really i should really congratulate everyone behind this effort especially the little historians who had taken the interest of coming up with the things wonderful so true ma'am thank you so much supriya ma'am and you know a special special thanks to all the parents making it you know uh, guiding the students making it possible uh, preeti ma'am rishu ma'am and all the principals who have been guided and supported everyone thank you so much it was a great team work you know we all connected virtually and it was a great team work happened and because of that team work we all can see a great presentation today right so that was wonderful thank you thank you team thank you so much that was you know i was feeling so proud to hear you all that history can also be taught in an innovative way oh my god that somebody can teach me history in an innovative way thank you children hats off to you all thank you thank you so much sir yes truly say you people have done a great job children so it is always a pride moment of a parent when a parent is called by the daughter or son's name yes you made your parents proud today now i am taking an honor to call uh, niharika's father to come forward and give your valuable feedback how did you feel this program about this program good evening everyone uh i am shadrudeep singh i am uh, niharika's father and uh, today uh, i really uh, like and felt privileged to be part of this uh, archaeologist uh, activity which you all are running and uh, i am really thankful to the teachers especially the uh, rishu ma'am uh, i also observed uh, shafi sir and others who uh, facilitated uh, and and the and priti ma'am also uh, who facilitated uh, these children to uh, make and present a perfect uh, presentation over magadha dynasty magadha dynasty is a very uh, golden chapter of indian history and uh, this is a very very detailed presentation and prepared by the children and i am really uh, feeling very delighted to uh, know the talent of these uh, children and i'm really thankful to the all the school authorities and the principal and the uh, teachers for this activity so nice of you thank you so very much wish you all the very best uh, thank you so much sir for your valuable feedback and your valuable support which you have given as you are the one who supported us truly okay any of any other parent who wants to come forward and share their valuable feedback i request priti ma'am please come forward thank you uh, so much ma'am and thank you everyone a very good evening once again to all the dignitaries our students parents and the audience watching us live definitely everything was so beautiful it went so smooth and lot of practices rehearsals have definitely turned out today i have been there in the rehearsals with rishu ma'am with sir and all the students we have we have been practicing your parents were a support i still remember vanshika's mother feeding her with the spoon when she was practicing and she was doing her part so great support extended by all the parents and we used to think that like history is a little boring but these students these champions actually i would say with their presentations have changed the scenarios not for us but even for our audience so thank you so much everyone for this wonderful learning to all of us and special thank you to all the dignitaries for joining with us uh, supriya ma'am the principal of ludhiana branch and special thank you to the state coordinator mr madhusudan sir zonal coordinators mr gurraj sir and mr nankishore sir and also all the principals of the branches 
with all the great effort and support of the parents. So thank you so much to the parents also being at home and arranging the material and making them practice and listening to them. It was a great support to us. So would like to thank all the team leaders, especially Mr. Shakil sir. And yes, the person who comes with a great initiative and believes that every child has a spark and that just needs to be ignited. That's our Veda ma'am, the head of the department. So special thank you, Veda ma'am, for giving us us this platform, the Epic Emperor of India. And we presented today episode 7 by Delhi Team 2. Further more episodes would be coming with different zones, which will help us to grow and learn more. So thank you so much. I cannot forget Rishu ma'am, my partner for training the students. Thank you so much Rishu ma'am and thank you so much to our regional head for Delhi Zone, Mr. Shafi sir. It was an amazing event by all of you and thank you once again. So with this, we would be closing up today. And audience is requested to stay connected as Narayana would be coming up with a lot and lot more events and episodes. Thank you so much. Narayana School where learning never stops. So we can end up. Thank you so much, uh, Gorang sir. We can end the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Gorang sir. Yeah, Gorang sir, we can end the meeting. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.